I can't believe I'm making this video because I never expected to be in a position where I could offer any insight or advice about running a small business. But I frequently get asked how I run a quote, successful business. I'm going to break down everything that I feel contributed to my quote success in running an art shop online. I sell my original art on stationery and sticker products. Let's get into this. So I wrote out all the questions that I wanted to answer while I quality check a lot of my new sticky notes. So first things first, if you're new here, hi, I'm Dana. I am a full-time artist and I create stationary products for my shop, Gem & Cozy, with all of my original art. And I've been doing this for about two years now, but I've had Gem & Cozy as my own main website for about a year and a half. And to give you more context about my work and where I'm at in terms of social media and growth, I figured I could share my stats with you guys because I'm a numbers person, so it's really helpful to kind of know where a person's at. I still feel like I have a lot to learn and I still have room for growth, but this might kind of help give you a sense of where Dana is at right now. <laughs> So I'll put my stats here for each of my social media right now. My biggest following is on TikTok, and that's where I initially started. And then I also expanded to utilizing Facebook and Instagram around the same time. And then I also have a Pinterest as well as YouTube, which obviously you guys know because you found me here. So that's about 70,000 followers across the board right now, but we also always want to consider conversion rate since we're selling things and also engagement. It's always more important to focus on engaging your current community than just growing the numbers. Just the other day, I got a message from a fellow artist saying that I'm really inspiring to them and they asked me what I would attribute to my success. And I thought that was a really interesting question because it really depends on how you define success, right? So like, what are you going for? What does that mean? And can you quantify it? Can you describe it? All of the above. Everyone's motivation is different. So if you're trying to become a full-time artist to quit your job, that's very different from I want to continue working wherever I'm at, but I also want to start doing this as like a side business. Very different things. And then even for the financial piece of it, $2,000 a month with your business might be a lot to someone and to someone else that might not be enough. So I like to use that term very loosely. Success can mean a lot of different things. It may not even mean something financial. And when I started drawing stickers, I did it for fun. I used to joke around a little bit and say, oh, it would be so cool if everything just started to kind of take off and I could quit my job. And I seriously was joking when I was saying all that, but it ended up happening. And I think it's fine if you're going in with the mentality of this could turn into something. So I'm going to try my best to spend quality time on quality content. And so I also think that that is a practical way to think about it. And it also takes a lot of pressure off of you because you're not stuck there worrying about your views or your sales as much and you have more room to just kind of have fun. So with that being said, Success for me when I was starting out on TikTok mainly for Gem & Cozy was not about going full-time. I was just having fun. I had just gotten an iPad and Procreate as well as a Cricut and I really wanted to just learn the craft. So a lot of my content was about me designing random things as well as my failures with designing products. Please take everything I'm going to share as a grain of salt because this is just my personal experience. I still have a lot to learn, but over the past two years, this is kind of what I've gathered so far about my experience and what leads to long-term conversion in sales and in growth. So as an artist, 
unfortunately we have to be very good at content creation and a lot of the times people are incredibly talented at whatever they do they just don't know how to market it content creation is very visual and now with short form content so is that auditory piece because you can utilize different sounds and trends songs to really help kind of push the message forward of making a remark about your products so i feel like this is where a lot of people get stuck they have really great skills and talents but they don't really know how to translate that into content for people to find them so for me, I started with a lot of behind the scenes sticker making. I would show how my Cricut would cut things because the sounds are really satisfying to some people. I would show the peeling process, all of that. And I also spent a lot of time talking about here's my creative process, here's snippets of me drawing something, as well as all of my failures. So a sticker sheet cutting incorrectly because I accidentally loaded it upside down or I had a print error, things like that. And one of my very first viral videos on TikTok was actually a happy accident that went viral because it became really relatable. And that was my be you're doing a job sticker. So I was originally going to say be you're doing a good job. And it was in the middle of the night. I was really tired. I completely just did not write the word good. But the next day I woke up and I started printing them and it wasn't until I made my first set and shared it with my boyfriend that I noticed that I completely forgot the word good. But it became this really funny, relatable thing where people were like, you know what? I am just doing a job. I'm just existing and this is me trying my best and it's not the best, best work, but it's not the worst work and I'm just getting by. So it became this kind of encouraging sense of, you being mediocre is an okay thing and it just took off that video got over i think right now it's at like 700,000 views but within a few days it was at like 500,000 it was actually very stressful for me i didn't really know what to do or how to handle so many comments and so much traction but looking back one of the things that really helped amplify the situation and convert to sales was that I had drawn so many designs already that I had a really large selection of stickers and designs available already. At the time, I only had stickers, but everyone who was going over to try to find that be or doing a job sticker at my shop ended up buying so many other designs. And because of the concepts of my work being very similar with kind of like adulting and mental health, people found a lot of things that they gravitated towards. And because of that, I got a lot of sales and a lot of new customers through that one video. When I think back on it, I do wish that I started cross posting to other social media platforms sooner though, because that would have been the best time for me to do it, such as moving on to Instagram. I had an Instagram, but I wasn't really using it. And that would have been the perfect time for me to just use the same videos, move it over there, tell people in my TikTok videos, hey, like you can find me on Instagram too, so that I could have converted more customers over there. But I was so overwhelmed that I couldn't even think to do that at the time. But now that would be my first piece of advice is to cross promote, get on Facebook, get on Instagram, do YouTube or YouTube shorts, do whatever you can to share your content across as many platforms as possible because it will help you grow your audience. This is also very stressful and time consuming unless you pay for one of those apps that help you like synchronize your posts from one platform to the others for you. But I manually do them right now and I kind of just got in the habit of posting maybe three TikTok videos every day and then I make sure all of those go to my Instagram, my Facebook Reels, as well as my Pinterest. And I do try to look at the analytics because you can tell how many people are viewing it. I noticed that even though Pinterest doesn't get me direct customers as often, I'm getting so many views on those videos and they're there permanently. So people are always rediscovering me. So I try to cross post there as much as possible, even though I don't post there as frequently as I do on TikTok and Instagram. And for those of you who don't know, posting on Instagram and 
pressing that little button to say, hey, post this on Facebook is different from you going directly onto your Facebook app and posting through Facebook Reels. So Instagram Reels and Facebook Reels actually work separately. They have different programs. So on Facebook, I actually monetize my videos and I make a little bit on each video that I post now because I qualify for their ads on Reels. So you actually get paid over there and that's different from Instagram. Unfortunately, Instagram discontinued their little bonus Reels stuff and I was way too late to even jump on that bandwagon but every platform is so different so it takes a while to kind of figure out what's going to work best for you but it's never a good idea to box yourself into one platform because anything could happen with social media and let's say tiktok actually gets banned you had all your eggs in that one basket and you have to start from scratch so diversifying is really really important and i'm always reminding myself to try to do that that's one of the reasons i started youtube so that i can make long form content and connect with more people and also it's another way for people to find me and i can share some of my other interests with you guys as well so let's talk about how to build traction and keep people around so the other question that i get is how do you continue to build traction and that is tricky just because I feel like there's so many factors involved but I think it's really important to do a couple of things so some of the most obvious ways to make sure that you are continuing to build traction is to create an email subscription list so that people can join your email list and whenever you have updates or sales you can update them directly through that email list I really wish I started that sooner and now I have maybe over 500 people on there and it continues to grow little by little which is always so surprising and cool to me but you really want to start it sooner than later because you're kind of just wasting an opportunity to not interact with your closer fan base and customers who want to keep up with your work as consistently as you would like them to. And I also like to offer small little incentives like sales or special freebies just to my email sub people. A lot of people always ask about when one of my popular products called the Cozy Confetti is going to be back in stock. And I always say it doesn't launch consistently, so subscribe to the emails and you'll be the first one to find out. It's a really simple way to make sure that people are catching your sales and your promotions because we all know that you posting on Instagram or TikTok doesn't always mean that all of your audience is going to find and watch that video. A lot of times you also end up kind of being cornered into a certain aesthetic when you start social media. A lot of people will be like, oh, I associate you to really great ASMR videos or whatever it is because maybe you had one video do really well in that category and then everyone is there for that content and that is kind of tricky because you don't want to box yourself in but you also want to provide content that people are looking forward to i found out just by asking people about what they like about my content that everyone likes my talking videos and i thought that was really interesting because i really like to make the relaxing asmr type of videos with no words but i found out that a lot of people like to come and watch my content purely for the talking and they find it relaxing so that was really insightful to me because i also noticed over time that a lot of people watch my wordless videos like less so i'm like oh okay i i didn't know that and i would have never known that if i didn't ask <laughs> so don't be afraid to ask your viewers like what do you like from my content especially if it's going to help you grow i also think it's really important to make as many connections as possible i really like to get to know all of you and I have become friends with so many people through social media I may have never met you guys but I know a lot of your names and your jobs I may even know about your pets or your siblings or your children 
and that is one of the greatest things about being a full-time artist i just find that so fun and i know that's not for everyone but i think it is important to at least show that you are reading people's comments and responding so that they have a sense of connection to you and that goes a really long way another thing to keep in mind is that short form content Hold your attention for a very short amount of time. So if you have really long scenes in your videos and nothing's really happening, it's not really moving, or you're talking very slowly and there's a lot of gaps, it could mean that the retention to your videos are going to decrease. So even what I'm doing right now, like not a good idea. There's no movement here. I'm just sitting here talking and you could completely lose focus because it's getting boring. And unfortunately, we do have to think about that. You do have to consider cut scenes and changes in filming angles and all that movement really helps people kind of like stay engaged. So my packing videos are a really good example because they are constantly moving around since I'm taking you guys across the sticker table to grab things. And in the meantime, other people are like looking at designs behind the table, like on the table instead of what I'm showing them. So that has a lot of advantages, especially if you're selling something. So the setup is really important. And one thing I've also noticed is that this is my, my wooden table. I don't like to film my sticker packing videos stagnant on the table for the whole thing because you don't get to see the sticker table and it's a lot more dull. And I know everyone's setup and style is different. So if you found a way to make that work for you, then that's fine. But that's just something that I have experienced and I have noticed. Another thing to keep in mind is that your content might be amazing, but it may just not get traction. It's like this weird chance luck situation where you could have made a great video and it could have been sharing some really cool art or content and for whatever reason it just doesn't get picked up and i know that could be really discouraging but the best thing to do is just keep going and without thinking about that being an indication of your success or your self-worth as an artist or creator and i think that really takes a load off of me when i'm just like okay i'm just making things and filming things and if something goes well then great otherwise i'm not gonna sit there and sulk about it and look at the views constantly and be like oh my gosh this really sucks and stress myself out the burnout is unreal so it is really important to continue to recycle your content and make sure that you're using the same content over and over again so if you had a video do well last year you can repost that you can even go back to it and rewatch it and kind of change it see if there were any sections that were too slow or you could have condensed it to make it faster and shorter that kind of thing and repost it you can use trending sounds or whatever you'd like to do and see how it goes but that way you're not constantly trying to make new things and burn yourself out Another thing to keep in mind is that your products may do really well in one form and then may not do as well in another form. So I make a lot of different stationary products and all of them are on different products. So I have this as a sticker, I'm working on it as a sun catcher, I could put it on a notebook, I have it as a bookmark. and you would be so surprised to find that one design that does really really poorly could do so well on a different product so it is really important that you experiment and try different things same thing for your video styles i feel like at the end of the day you just being creative and trying everything without feeling like nervous or ashamed or embarrassed is the best way to approach it. So I had this sticker design for a really long time and I personally love it so much. It's a cute little smiling sun and unfortunately it's not one of my most popular designs, but I turned it into a sun catcher and it is my most popular sun catcher design and it makes so much sense because it's a sun but you would never think that until you try putting it on a different product the same way that some of my stickers convert better to magnets and that some people just prefer having magnets over stickers because it's less permanent and they can stick them on their fridge and i try to 
get all of the sticky notes that people really like and match up the designs. And I try to form collections around designs that do really well. So if I know that everyone likes that you got this boo, then I'll try to turn it into a sticky note and also a notepad and so on and so forth. It doesn't always work out and you'll just never know until you try, but I think that that is the biggest takeaway as a small business owner and an artist. I know that there are a lot of variables, including budget and space and minimum quantities for ordering things that can get in the way of your creativity and exploring these options. But you sort of have to just find that middle ground that works for you and slowly try it out. You can always ask your followers are you interested in this product? Should I turn this into a pre-order? Things like that so that it takes a little bit off of you and you don't have to pay up front for everything first and worry about if they're going to do well or not. If I can say one last thing about being an artist and a content creator at this point is that people may start following you for your products, but in the long run, they start to follow you for you. When you share things about yourself and your story, your thought processes and opinions, all of that is going to build into an audience who are like-minded, who are inspired by you, who connect with you on some level. So I know it's not easy to sort of put yourself out there and you can do that in small baby steps. Like you guys know, I don't really like show my face in my videos, but you don't have to do that in order to connect with people. And I think that that's one of the greatest lessons I've learned this past year doing all this, that I've connected with so many people and I feel like I've made so many lasting friendships and relationships. And that's just been through comments and order checkout notes. So don't be afraid to be you. That sounds cheesy, but it's really true. And I wish you all the best of luck. Let me know if you guys have any questions and take care.